Hello, this is Tommy. Welcome back to Chatomics. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Salmon to pre-process bulk ANI sequencing data from GEO. So first, uh, let's take a look at the example data sets we're going to use for this demo. So if you go to GEO and go to this accession number, GSE 197576. So this is an experiment for uh, uh, this cell line called SW480 is a colon cancer cell line and under normoxia and hypoxic condition. And it also has a knockout for uh, a couple of genes. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to just use the uh, control uh, sgRNA. So essentially, there's no knockdown he knockout here under normoxia condition. And the two samples here, and also two samples that are under uh, hypoxic condition. So. So those are the samples we're going to use. So essentially, we just want to find the genes that are differentially expressed on the hypoxic condition versus an amoxic condition. Okay. So if you click this, and and you will see um, this SRA ID here. So if you go here, and then you see those are the SR or the uh, the file the. They are, those are not FASTQ files, so those are SRR format, and then you need to actually convert those SSR uh, files into FASTQ files. So if you click this, it will have uh, the, uh, the information, okay? So this uh, control uh, sgRNA under non moxic condition, and I believe it's also single end instead of uh, paired end, okay? So to do this, uh, we want to download the FASTQ files. To do this, we're going to actually use a tool called FASTQDL. So this tool. So actually, I found this tool the other day on Twitter, uh, uh, which was tweeted by the author of Salmon, uh, Rob. And, and if you, you can go here and see the how to download and install, install it and how to use it. Just uh, documentation in the readme here. So it's very, very easy to use. So you, first you use Conda to install this tool, and then you uh, activate the Conda environment. Then now you're ready to go, okay? So I actually really like one of the uh, arguments uh, called group by sample. So the reason I like, uh, like it is because, for example, here, this is for that single sample here, the SRX. This is the uh, experiment ID. And sometimes you actually have multiple SRR runs, SRA runs. So you have multiple SRR IDs for the same uh, ex uh, experiment. So what you can do actually, you can use uh, that uh, group by uh, experiment. Uh, argument will actually merge all those FASTQ files for you, which is very handy. Okay, so let's go back to the blog post here. So I will have the uh, link of this post uh, in the show notes. Okay, so after uh, uh, you, I assume that you already have Conda installed, then you just uh, follow uh, here to uh, uh, Download the uh, install the bioconductor uh, the fastq DL from the bioconductor channel, and then you activate uh, the uh, this environment. So uh, call it fastq download, but you can call it anything. So just a quick tip here: if uh, Conda is too slow for you, you can use Memba. So it's a drop-in replacement replacement of Conda, but it's much faster. But they're all big snakes. Okay, so. <clears throat> to do this, so we uh, first actually make a directory, so you can uh, hypoxia RNA sequencing. Then go to that folder, and then uh, make a new a new folder called data, and then you can download the data, uh, the FASTQ files into that data folder. Okay, so once you download uh, install FASTQ DL, then you can do FASTQ DL, and then you can provide accession number. So the accession number, if you go here. It essentially is this number, okay? So for every sample here, you can find the SRX number, okay? So essentially those are the four samples here, normoxia condition and hypoxic condition. So 
after you execute those commands, then there will be this uh, fastq.gz uh, files downloaded into the folder. And uh, because this is a single end, so you only have one uh, fastq files for one sample. So if it's a paired end, you will have the um, uh, this SRX number and then uh, underscore r1.fastq.gz and or r2.fastq.gz. So those are the uh, re uh, forward and reverse reads, okay? Okay, so I think it's fine. <laughs> Just a quick note, so uh, because we only have four samples, so we can't type those commands actually line by line, it's fine. However, if you want to actually download all the uh, files, I think it's uh, 12 samples, something like that, maybe it's kind of tedious to just write this line by line. So instead, you can actually get those metadata or those SRX numbers by using the SR run selector, or you use uh, our package called Geo Query or Geo uh, meta, da uh, meta Database. Okay, so I have a link here, but you can take a look uh, and how to use the uh, uh, SRA, uh, the run selector, how to select the uh, <coughs> metadata from, uh, from the web interface. Okay, so you have all those files. Okay. Uh, okay, so in this example, I also uh, skipped uh, FastQC to look for the quality of the reads and uh, if there are, for example, a lot of uh, contaminations of the adapt sequencing adapters, you might also want to use a tool called FastP to remove those uh, adapters. Okay, but I will skip it for this. So now next step is to, inst to install a uh, Salmon. Okay, Salmon is also in Conda, so you can use Conda, create uh, the name of the environment it will be Salmon or any name. And then this is Salmon that you want to unstore, uh, install, okay? So after you install it, the next step is to build a index. An index, so essentially the uh, Salmon need to align those reads to uh, reference index, right? So, and to do this, we need a Transcriptome, or it's a transcript a faster file to build index. So we also need a GTF file, which is gene transfer format file that we can use to um, to map uh, gene IDs uh, that we, we need to use actually in the uh, downstream analysis. Okay, so there are multiple actually resources to get the reference files. So uh, for example, there could be UCSC, Ensemble, uh, Gene Code. Uh, and there are just uh, many places to get the reference file, okay? So uh, in this video, I actually show you uh, where uh, uh, where can you actually uh, download those files, okay? So for the purpose of this tutorial, we will just use the files from Gene Code. So if you click that link, you, then it will go to this page. So essentially those are uh, GTF files and also faster files that we need, okay? So those are the transcriptome sequences and those are the genome sequences. So uh, remember, we only we need the transcript fa faster, not the genome faster. So we just download those one, this one, and also the GTF file. Um, so, we, so we will download actually the, this either the basic gene annotation or the comprehensive gene annotation. So either will be fine. Okay, so let's go back, okay. So let's download the reference faster file. So we shall make a directory as a reference and we just use wget to get the, you know, the annotation GTF file and uh, those two GTF actually, the other one is called basic uh, annotation. So you can use either one. And this is just some uh, Unix commands to kind of look at the, uh, file content. So here in this so uh, example, so I first grab dash v and uh, this hashed, so essentially those are the comment lines uh, be, uh, in the front of the GTF file, so I will just uh, remove them. So reverse pattern, so so remove those uh, hash, uh, comment lines and okay, the third column is the gene and cut out the, the ninth field, so it will be the field that contains the, the information, for example, the gene ID here, ensemble ID, and also the uh, official gene symbol. So those are the, the fields that we are going to use to map the, 
the Ansel variety and the uh, and the gene gene name. Okay, so we can do actually a little bit more. So, for example, uh, this gene type is a link RNA for this one, and we can actually uh, do a tally of the gene type of all the genes actually in, in this file. So essentially, uh, what you can do so you still cut out this dash f the ninth ninth field, and you get this. And what you do, you actually use the uh, uh, this as the delimit delimiter and the cut the second field. So essentially, you will cut out this field, this field, gene type field, right? And then you can sort it and unique and dash c. You, you will count how many times that uh, uh, that gene type appears, and then I sort it by the first uh, column here by number. And the reverse, so the so the most common ones will be the uh, protein coding gene type, so twenty thousand uh, protein coding genes, and you also have nineteen thousand link RNAs, and then the other stuff here. Okay, so we'll use the GTF file later uh, in a future uh, video, but uh, let's actually download the FASTA transcript FASTA file as well. So use wget commands, and then. And download this uh, gene code uh, transcript fa.gz file. So now we can index the transcriptome. So uh, you can list whatever the uh, environment that you have here. So uh, if you don't remember uh, which environment that uh, you created for, for Salmon, so then you uh, counter activate Salmon and then you do index Salmon index. So dash t is the FASTA file and dash i is the output. Uh, folder for the uh, Selma index and dash k is the kmer uh, so 31 um, 31 mers so and then you specify those uh, this uh, fasta file is from gene code so you can also uh, omit this if it's not from gene code so once uh, it will take uh, maybe uh, 10 minutes or so to build this index and once you have this now it's ready for a quantification so essentially uh, Selma will uh, uh, do this causal alignment, those reads uh, to the uh, transcriptome, and then we'll get accounts uh, for for each gene. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the uh, salmon actually uh, command it's called salmon quantification, and dash i is the index we just we just created here, and then uh, dash l this is called library type. So I used capital A, essentially automatic detect detection by uh, Selman. And then uh, dash R is essentially just reads. Uh, this just single reads here because it's single end. So if you have a paired end, you have to use dash one and dash two for the R1, R2 reads. So I want to talk a little bit more about the fragment, uh, this library type, essentially this dash L here. So because uh, so you can go to this link for the documentation. So essentially uh, for uh, for paired end reads and also even uh, for single end reads, it, it can be either, for example, like first strand, stranded or unstranded. So stranded means you know whether that read is from the sense or the anti-sense read. Uh, 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 sense, uh, uh, it's from the sense or anti-sense strand. So. And also, uh, even you, if you know it's so, this S means stranded. So if the library type is stranded, and but again, this read one and read two, so this R one and R two. So R one could be from this uh, this uh, uh, five prime to three prime. This like for example, sense sense strand, and R two from this anti sense sense strand. But it's also possible that R two is from uh, the uh, the sense strand and R one. Uh, uh, is from the anti sense strand, so it really depends on how the library is constructed, and you also it's also possible to have a uh, library type like this. So uh, essentially, this uh, uh, this uh, forward reads and and, re uh, and the reverse reads they're kind of overlapping with each other, but the direction uh, opposite. And uh, you can uh, yeah, you can also have for example. Uh, like this, this thing. So essentially, you have um, the read two actually from 
like from this uh, steel V2 from the uh, five uh, the sand strand and, and read one from the anti sand strand, but uh, read one is uh, more close to the three prime here. Okay, so uh, make sure you know how the library is constructed. So if you don't know, uh, you need to ask uh, the uh, uh, web biologist who actually made the library. So it will. So they will tell you how the library is uh, constructed, so you can specify the right arguments for Salmon here. Okay. Okay. So after you, okay, specify the reads and output folder and some other uh, arguments related to mappings, and then Salmon will do the uh, mapping for you and the quantification for you. So it's actually only. It only takes like a couple minutes actually to finish uh, for one file, so it's really fast and, uh, and actually very accurate. So after you finish that, then there will be this quantification folder, and then this log, and you can actually look at the mapping read here. It's like ninety-three percent of the reads that are mapped to the transcript, which is pretty good. So then we just do the same thing for the other three sample, and then. Uh, Salmon will generate this quant.sf file, and, and this is uh, those are the uh, counts files that we're going to use to read into R using uh, 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 TX uh, import, and uh, which I will show you uh, in the next video. Okay, and you can also look at the uh, mapping rate for all of them. So by using the find command, so find uh, in the current directory and that uh, all the files that match this name, and then you use xarc to actually uh, uh, send it to the grab command, and then you would grab uh, the mapping read. So for each of those files, it will grab. So you can find this pattern uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, in each line, and then you'll see, okay, they're all actually over 90% mapping read, which is great, okay? So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to load those uh, assets. Salmon files, some salmon quantification files into R and uh, use DSEQ for differential gene expression analysis. And that's it for today. I hope uh, it helps and see, uh, and see you next time. And I hope you like this content and make sure you subscribe.